A model steamboat named Edith. In this episode, which is part 15, I'm going to perform a live steam test using the new gas burner. But before I do that, I received a comment from a viewer pointing out that I should have put the regulator in the steam line after the lubricator. So initially, why didn't I do this? And the answer is, this boiler does not use superheat. So what comes out of the boiler to the engine is wet steam. And also, in the same way as on a steam locomotive, where the regulator is in the wet steam line, it's effectively lubricated by the water that's present in the wet steam line. And similarly, with smaller mammod type engines, even the cylinder seems to be lubricated by the wet steam. As this meticulous viewer pointed it out, I thought it would be quicker in the long run to modify the arrangement, rather than repeatedly answer the same question from other viewers who like to generally nitpick everything I do. Before I commence the steam test, I'm just going to seal the clack valve temporarily using a stainless steel ball in the union nut. I'm being picky. I didn't need to do this. The clack valve doesn't actually leak very much, but I didn't want a pool of water all over my bench. And here's the modified sievert gas burner that I put together in the last episode. It's temporarily held in place by a barco spanner. Barco spanners are so good, you can use them as clamps. And thinking about it, with a slight modification, they could be converted into very effective thumb screws. But as this video is generally about a steam test on a gas boiler, I will refrain from adding any comments about medieval torture devices in this episode. Although you can't see it on screen, I currently have my nose over the chimney, and as I move the burner into the flue, the combustion becomes inefficient and the smell from the chimney is very unpleasant. But when I move the burner into this position, the gas combustion is much improved. Now as you can clearly see, the lubricator is in the correct position before the slide valve in the steam line. With the gas burner turned down, the boiler is slowly warming up and this is a good time to fill the displacement lubricator. I use 1000 grade steam cylinder oil on all of my engines, but I must mention the viscosity of 1000 grade steam oil may not be suitable for every steam engine, once I wore out the silicone piston rings fitted to a very small twin cylinder engine because it didn't get hot enough and the steam oil was too viscous and therefore didn't lubricate the cylinder properly. So if you're running these smaller steam engines and you're not sure which oil to use, it's probably a good idea to contact the manufacturer to find out which grade of steam oil is recommended for the particular engine. When I first lit the gas burner, I turned the pressure down because I prefer to raise steam slightly slowly at the beginning. I don't think it's good for the boiler if suddenly it's hit by a ferocious blowtorch flame. But now the boiler's quite hot, I've turned up the pressure, and in no time at all, I have some steam. And as you can see, it's very wet steam, there's a lot of water coming out of the exhaust. And also, I haven't tightened the union nut on the lubricator. And before any viewers write in to tell me, yes, I am aware of this. Sometimes these viewers even tell me where it is occurring in the video, they will say. The comment usually starts, at 3 minutes 10, are you aware that the steam union is leaking? Oh no, that's the end of civilization as I know it. With just under 60 pounds per square inch on the clock, I think the pressure is going to blow. I meant out of the safety valve. I'm only using a piece of silicone rubber to pipe the engine to the boiler. And although I put a nylon tie wrap around the pipe to the tap, I didn't at the engine end. So when I opened the steam tap with the regulator nearly closed, the pressure built up in the pipe and blew it off the engine. What happened was, I opened the valve but didn't open the regulator sufficiently, and as the pressure increased, it expanded the silicone rubber pipe, which in turn came off the piece of copper pipe that is attached at the engine end. From this angle, you can see everything that's happening. You can clearly see the burner, the boiler and the engine. If you've been following the series, you'll realise that I said that I had four inches to play with to fit the burner, because four inches away from the flue tube entrance to the boiler is the water tank. And this is altogether a very good thing. I wish I could say, oh, I designed it to be like that and be smug and clever, but no, it just worked out like that. What this means is that the burner mounting, which will be obviously hot as it's attached to the burner, will be right next to the brass water tank. And that's a very good thing because some of the heat is going to radiate from the gas burner to the water tank, and this will make the water ever so slightly warm. And once again, if you've been following the rest of the series, you will realise that in the water tank is the gas tank. So what this means is, 
the radiated heat from the gas burner mounting is going to try and warm up the water in the water tank and that in turn will warm the gas tank but it won't because the gas tank is being very chilled by the evaporation of the gas inside it that feeds the burner because underneath the gas tank fastened into the boat will be a brass plate and it's to this brass plate that I will attach the gas burner. And that's it for this one. The engine is still running on the very last bit of steam. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.